Um, we'll be talking about still life. I'm going to do a demo, as you can see. And we will get to contour drawing of the still life using proportion, value, shading, texture. So I have some books up under here. And like I just got some a black, um, this is actually plastic. You can use fabric, whatever works for you. Um, and you need to make sure that's somewhere in the still life. You don't have to draw the whole thing, but it shouldn't just be floating in the middle of the page without looking like it's on the surface. So you don't, you see I have mine like piled up, like there's some overlapping here. You don't want them all lined up, you know, have it to where it's a little complicated so that you can get that in your drawing. If it helps you to draw the space around it in order to make that implied line, then do that. This is another way to, um, this is another way to get that implied line in there. To not use a hard contour line, um, like I said, you can start out with one and blend it out, or you can use negative space and don't even put your, um, your contour line in there. But let's go ahead and start. Welcome to my studio. We're going to be doing a still life today of fruit. We have lemons for our portfolio. Today I have lemons because that's what I had in my house. And when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. So I'm going to open my caddy here of my charcoal kit because it's faster and I'm working big and I can cover a lot of space in a, in a little bit of time and get more done and work faster. You can use the HB, B pencils, any of that. You're welcome to use charcoal if you wish. So I'm going to focus on these lemons. I've set them up. I have three and a half lemons and one little wedge on the side. Hopefully they don't move. You want to set up your still life. You want to have a good light source. Um, you want to have it where, depending on how long you work or how long your working session is going to be, you know, it's not going to move. Uh, if you need to get up and come back, you want to be able to do that um, so that it doesn't move. Because once you set it up and you start drawing, you kind of want to keep it that way. The issue here is that the angle that you guys see is here. But I'm over here on the side. So I have this view. And then my paper is here. And I have it situated so you guys can see. So I'm going to try to do my best with drawing that from the angle that I have. But my outcome up here may not be what you see here. Because I'm drawing from this angle, from this side view. Does everybody understand that? And I have my art kit here. I have all my charcoal, pencils, chamois, kneaded erasers, blending stumps, charcoal um, sticks. So what are we doing? Let's start with, you know, me. I love my charcoal. I'm going to do a soft charcoal. Actually, I would love a medium. I usually work with medium or soft. Soft is like when I really have to go fast and do a lot of blending in a little bit of time. Medium, I can control it a little bit better and it doesn't make quite a mess. And I'm using these teeny weeny little pieces. I'll figure out which one is which. Okay, that's a medium, that's a soft. Let's start with medium. So shape, so what is the shape of the object you're drawing? Mine, circles, obviously. Um, this way, from what you see, that's more of an ellipse or an oval. From what I see, I'm seeing the end over here, it's more of a circle. Um, that obviously is a circle, semicircle. All right, so all right, there we go. So I'm going to focus on placement. It would be good if I had something white in the background because I see everything in the background and that's like messing up my sight. But I've got three main circle, four main circles for my big lemons and this little wedge down here. So let's just worry about placement right now. And I'm just gonna use some gesture drawings. I'm gonna be a little bit bigger than normal here. I'm gonna, I've got one lemon here. Let me get the softer one, because I'm gonna blend a lot. Um, I've got one here. I've got one on top, and it's a little bit of overlap there. And pretty much they're all the same size. Now, see, I'm just, this is total gesture. And it's not really dark. I know you can't see it that well here. But um, this is just mapping it out. Okay, and then I've got one in the background back there. Mm. 
And if your charcoal is soft enough and your marks are light enough, you can just blend them away. And then my, my wedge is down here. And like I said, my angle is going to be different from what you see front-wise because I'm drawing from this way. So my wedge is, is, is here. So if you get your placement right to start out with, that's going to help you in the long run. All right, now, basically all the rest of this is um, surface. So, so my um, surface is kind of here. It's coming out way here. Uh, here. And then, actually it doesn't go that far. All right, then my surface goes, because of where I'm sitting, the angle is foreshortening. You got to get the proportion of your angles right. Okay, and then that just kind of comes off there. All right, and then I've got a little bit back here. Okay. All right, so I've mapped it out basic shapes. Now, I like to start with my darker areas first, especially if you are intimidated by making your dark areas really dark. Start with the darks first because it's okay to make it really dark. So up underneath this lemon is really dark because I've got a, okay, I need a bigger piece now because this little piece I can't manipulate. Um, up underneath your lemons and your shadow areas, you want to get those. So let me find a bigger stick that's soft. That's medium. Give me a second, guys. I don't have my glasses on. I think this is soft. And it'll have a print on the side. It'll say M or F, S for soft, M for medium. H for hard. Okay, so now I've got a long stick. So I'm just going to go in and map out my dark areas. Okay, see the soft one gets really, and all that little fuzz just falls down. The soft areas get really dark. And you try to stay in the same position, like don't you move, because if you move, you're going to um, you're gonna see the light or the shadows in a different place. All right, it's really dark up underneath this one. Even though my circles may not be perfect, that's okay, because I'm going to come back in and do that later. So what I'm doing now is working on the um, negative space, the shadow. And this thing is plastic so it picks up a lot of different light and shadows in different places. Okay, so I'll put that in there. It's kind of off and on in between there because I've got light coming in this way and there's a space between this lemon and this lemon. So it's not totally dark up underneath here. So I'm just gonna kind of map out pretty much where the darkest areas are. Finding your darks first and, and looking at them as a shape, like these little darks in here look like little triangles. Finding your darks first and making them really dark will keep you from being, like I said, intimidated about getting those dark areas. Don't just go on with it. Don't even, don't even be shy. Find the darkest areas and make them dark and it's okay. All right, so there's no shadow up under this one because this this one is sitting on top of the rest of them. Um, and that's pretty much my darkest, darkest areas. Now I'm going to take my little piece and expand some of that out because I'm worried about time here. I'm going to turn it on its side and expand some of that out because it's radiating out in, onto that plastic. And I chose plastic. Plastic is hard because it has so many innuendos. As soon as you have one little pleat, it's going to be a whole lot of light on one side and a whole lot of dark on the other side with a line and all that and all that. So fabric might be easier for you. Less reflection. All right. Now that just kind of maps out. Now all the rest of this obviously is black because this is a black piece of plastic. But as you can see right here, this is where my light is hitting from up there. I have a light up here, I have a light over here, and I have a light, I have a light here, I have a light over there, and I have a light above. So there's like three light sources. So this is really light. 
but it's still a black piece of plastic, but it's reflection. So you're going to work on, I'm trying to show you there, there's a dark there. It's darker over here. So, you know, we can work on that. And that can also help you with drawing your negative space so that you're not get, putting that hard contour line um, in there. But see, what I need to be doing is looking here instead of there. I'm looking at what you guys see instead of what I see. But still, it's pretty much the same. It's darker over there. All right, so... I got some dark back here. And then all of that I'll probably blend a little bit later. And there's some dark up underneath this wedge here. Uh, and yes, we know that all the rest of that is dark. So let's not worry about sheep right now. Let's worry about the lemons. So the lemons are yellow. And you have a black pencil or a black pen or a black piece of charcoal. All right, well, how are you going to do that? You don't want to worry about color. You want to worry about shading and value. You want to worry about light source. From what you guys can see, there's light hitting this lemon right here. There's light hitting this lemon right here. You can see the little white spot in, in, the, in, the, in the middle. Um, and then out to the side, it's the darker yellow. Just think it's going to be darker shade instead of yellow make it gray or black in your head. So you're looking at the shadow. So from where I'm sitting, that's like the end of this lemon. There's the little part that you, you know, the, the end of it. And then I'm gonna shade, like what, like I'm saying, when you use a soft charcoal, you can just map in those darker areas and then just come back with your blending stump. Your blending stump can do the rest of the drawing, to be honest with you. All right, there's a little shadow there. There's a big, larger shadow here. All right, for the rind, um, it's not really shadow, but it's lighter than this part. So you kind of want to map that out. So it's a circle, and then you got your your um, your foreshortening here. So this is where the lemon part is, and this is like the the part that's um, the rind. And then we'll get all those details, you know, a little later. You can kind of map it out. Just, okay, this is where it's going to be. Just to get your mind right. I'm talking through this. We have a seed there. It doesn't have to be perfect when you're sketching it. It's just, it does need to be in the right place, though. No, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to be in the right place. Uh, I got too many lines. This one, one. Okay, I got another line. Okay, that's confusing. All right, so I'm mapping that out. Uh, let's work on the shadow in this area. I'm not even drawing. I'm not even drawing lines. I'm just drawing shadow. And this little piece is so small that it's falling out of my hand. But I need it because a big piece is not going to work for me because I'm trying to do shadow here. It may not look like anything now, but just get those shadows in there, and we'll be okay. All right, and then that back one, we've got, now this is what's really gonna help. There's a, that third one back here, I can see right through these first two here, there's an opening. You can't see it, but I can. So that opening, I can see this third lemon back in the back and it's dark right here. So this is not a line, this is shadow. And it's making a line, that's implying my line for the other two. Okay, and then back here is plastic. All right, now, uh, I think I'm going to start blending now so that you can kind of get an idea of where everything is. So my trusty blending stump that I love so much. All right, so what do I want to start on? I may want to start on the, I want to start on the surface just so I can get an idea of what I'm doing. Um, you don't want to take out too much of that dark. Like I said, if you don't have a blending stump, you can use this Q-tip tissue. And you, I'm going to come back in with my eraser. You can draw with your eraser and with the blending stump. You're blending, but you're drawing at the same time. Like It's like a reductive or drawing in reverse, kind of. I'm not going to blend that all the way out because I want it to, I want to keep those areas of, of light and dark, or keep those areas of dark. I'm just 
blending that out a little bit. And then for example, let me show you what I mean. I can do a full thing here and then I can come back in with my eraser and map out those lighter creases in my plastic. Like there's a crease right here and that is a, is a light streak right here. You can draw with your eraser. Mm, and then the, wherever you have highlight, you don't have to worry about drawing the highlight in, erase the highlight out. And there's one behind there. And my little brush. You don't wanna, if you blow on it, it'll, you don't wanna get saliva on your drawing. Okay, so blending stump. Um, and just for the sake of time, you want to keep maintain your dark. And if if, you, if this blending stump or if you're chamois or whatever, if it takes up, if it takes off too much of the pigment, then just go back in with your um, go back in with your charcoal. And don't you don't want little chop. You don't want to see your choppy strokes. It needs to be all blended. Um, and then turn it. If you're running out of pigment, turn it. Like this is some charcoal I use from another day. Or you can take a really dirty chamois. Like these are really dirty. Remember I told you they were. And you can just add it in like that. And then go back and erase where there's dark areas. Like all of this is plastic. That'll just kind of map it in for you. And that way you can cover a lot of a lot of space in a little bit of time. So use a dirty chamois. And I'm gonna use my left hand for a second. If you're ambidextrous, great. I'm usually ambidextrous when I do art. No, most times I can use both hands. All right, so that just maps it in. Um, you're using your blending stump. Map that in. I need to get back up in there. Uh, this is my lemon. This is my plastic. And you can't really see between those two, so I'm just going to kind of leave that there. And then that dark area. And there was a lighter area in there that I need to go back and fill in. All right. I need to erase my. Where is it? It's right here. There's a highlight. And those highlights really make a difference. I mean, it really makes it pop. Um, so make sure when you get your dark areas, you get your lighter areas too. And even if they're like right next to each other, that's really good. That contrast will show you that there's, um, I guess, a ripple in that plastic there. And you can blend this a little bit better, but you get the point. So we're just, we're still kind of sketching now. We're still in sketch mode. We're not in detail mode. All right, let's get to the lemons. Okay, so for the sake of time, let me get to my lemons. All right, so I kind of mapped out where the darkness was. And remember, you're, these things are light. Lemons are not dark. Like, yellow is a light color. So you're basically just really focusing on your light and shadow here. So you're working on the form now. And I did not, I never did draw a dark, hard edge. I kind of mapped it in. I kind of gave you some uh, implied lines. And that shadow gradually gets lighter here. And you, if it's a round object, go in the direction of the object. Like if it's a lemon, a kiwi, an apple, you know, you want to give it that rounded edge. Okay, and then those little dimples. If you like stippling, there's, there's some complicated shadows going here. This lemon is casting a shadow. And I need a little bit darker. All right, I've got a harsh difference between where this shadow is being cast from this lemon to where the light is hitting on this lemon. So you, it's, it's really distinct. Like it's a line from my side. You can't see it from your side. but And I think I came in too far. But right now, don't worry about detail. Just get your... Get your bearings on your lights and shadows. Like I'm not even, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting that I'm drawing a lemon. I'm just drawing lights and shadows. That's what I'm worried about. 
Draw lights and shadows and everything else will materialize. All right, now I got to get the underside of this thing. Um, here. I'm just looking at shapes. Even the shadows make shapes. So if you look at the shapes of the shadows, then you're good. My goal here right now is for this to look like some lemons before you leave today in the little bit of time that I have so that I'm, I just kind of want to get my point across here. All right, now this is kind of hard. This part. All right, a little bit of detail here, a little bit of shadow here. And it might not look like it's supposed to look up close, but far away it might. Now, there is a little teeny little line here where that there's an indentation where that part sticks out of that lemon. And then I have the little end part there. So I have to I need to make it look like that's coming out into space. Um that's a little bit darker there. That's a little bit darker there. Okay, and then when you start doing that, you'll figure out where your darks are not dark enough. You can go back in with that charcoal. Where your shadows are more defined. Mm, that's not perfect, but okay. Um, so I'm, I'm really drawing with my blending stump. I'm not even drawing with the pencil. Like... Okay, I need to move on so that I can. And I also want to get rid of this edge. Let me get a cleaner piece of chamois. That's where my light is hitting. So by the time you do all your blending, all those original, all those original um, sketch marks are going to disappear. So I'm looking at my reflection here, and I need. There's, I see the problem. There's a little reflection of light up underneath this. That's what I'm seeing. There's some light here. Watch this. That's what's bothering me. It was all going together and it's not supposed to. I'm telling you, that light and shadow will save your life. It really will. I'm drawing with my eraser now. I was drawing with my blending stump. Now I'm drawing. I'm drawing with my eraser. I'm taking out some of the dark for the light part. Now be careful with that because I need that to be white. All right, that's a little better. It looks like an apple though. Mm, I see the problem. I need to blend some of that. There you go. You can blend with your eraser. Did y'all know that? Gentle strokes. Pretend like your eraser is the drawing instrument. Instrument. Okay, that's not supposed to be there. I went too far. Nope, nope, nope. That's not gonna work because that was there's a distinct line there on my lemon here that I'm seeing on my side. Okay, let's move to another lemon. So what I did today was focus on darks and lights and blending, and I didn't even worry about trying to get perfect little edges. Okay. So we left off with this lemon. And I this lemon doesn't have all of that on the, my end. It's just kind of yellow. So I was going to come back in with my... Now something moved because my, my lemon wedge moved, I think. All right, I'm going to come back in with that shadow and I'm going to blend here. I'm going to get rid of that edge. I'm just kind of feeling my way through this. Now, it does have a little protrusion of that tip of that lemon, so I'm going to have to go back in there and fix that. Um, but let me get my shadows right. That's what I'm concerned with now. Details come later. There's a shadow here. And it looks choppy because that's how I was blending my shadow areas. And I need to make that look not choppy so it can look rounded. 
All right. And I've got a little here. I need to get rid of that stripe. I know, I'll just see waste it. How about that? And then come back in with, with some value. I'm just going to blend right over that because that was shadow. And then I'll go back in and draw with my eraser like I did before and pick up some of those lighter values. But let me, before I do that, I have a little stray mark here that's not supposed to be there. You can erase your big sketch marks that aren't supposed to be there. And remember, these little brushes are great because they keep you from smearing what you have. Okay, so um, I'm going to give me some value here and then I'm going to go back in with my eraser because all of that is not that gray tone. And I got some reflected light. Now that's another thing. Reflected light is hard because it's not shadow and it's not your light source. It's light reflecting off of the surface onto that object. Now, let me come back in here. I'm gonna draw with my eraser some more. Draw with my eraser some more. Draw with my eraser some more. I'm going in circular motions. Pick up some of that. Mm, okay. Now, what I wanna do real quick is get that tip that's protruding out. So how do I do that? I need to get my charcoal. And I'm going to come, I'm not going to come with a hard line, but I'm going to come outside of that protrusion and I'm working on the dark value behind it. I'm doing that negative space thing and making that implied line. So this is not the line of the protrusion. This is the line of the shadow behind the protrusion. Okay. Then I'm going to take my blending stump. Keep that darkness, but blend it out. You want to keep that integrity of that dark right there, but blend out the edge. Mm -hmm. And then here, do the same. This is where those little details make a difference. Like it's not detail, but it's detail shading. Now, that almost looks like the, the end of the lemon sticking out. All right now, I would have to get this part right now. I have some darker area here that didn't come. Let me get my charcoal. It's a little indentation here and it's a little bit darker. So I need a little bit of pigment there. Just a little bit and I need to blend. Find those darks, remember. All right, blend that. And blend that. You don't want those hard lines. Okay, now I'm going to try to map out, um, let's go ahead and work on the wedge. I don't know, I did move it. It was like this when I started, kind of. No, what was all right. All right. So here I'm going to work on rind. Um, okay, so you have the the peel, which is the yellow, and then the rind, which is like the white part, and then the I guess the meat. So the darkest is your dark yellow. You can't really see it on the zoom, but and then your rind is the lightest, and then your the fruit on the inside is in between. All right, well, how do you do that with a piece of charcoal? It's not gonna be black because you got black up under here. What's the darkest is the shadow. That lets you know what does the darkest need to be. The shadow is the darkest. I got another little piece of shadow over here. All right, the shadow is the darkest. So go from there. You know it's not, the rind is not as dark as the shadow, but it's darker than the, I'm sorry, the peel is not as dark as the shadow, but it's darker than the rind. 
All right, I don't want to make a line. I'm just kind of, I'm putting some pigment on here because I need to be able to blend something. I also need to get rid of this because you can't see through this wedge to the lemon in the back. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to get my blending stump. Mm, all right. I'm going to map out where that peel is. That's why I left me some pigment there. I just gave it there not to make a line, but to give me some pigment. And if I go over, I can just go back in and erase. All right. Now... Hmm. All right, then I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and map out where my fruit is and leave that white strip in there so I'll know where my rind is, the white part, the, the bitter part. And then whatever's in the wrong place is too dark, I'll come back in with my eraser, pick it up, if it's not dark enough, I'll come back in with either my blending stump or my charcoal. Now, you still have values in the wedge itself. Like from where I see, it's darker over there. So wherever it's darker, make it darker. Do I have enough here to make it darker? Probably not. That's why I need to come back in with a little bit more charcoal. I'll remember that that's supposed to be darker. I'm not even drawing with a pencil. I'm just drawing with my smudge if you take your blending stump draw with your smudge then you're drawing like same thing with your eraser all right that hard line shouldn't be there i need to come back while i'm in that area there's a darker shadow behind this lemon wedge on this one behind me or behind it is it that dark no but i'm gonna blend it i'm on an angle here so this shadow on this lemon that's being cast by this wedge is not as dark as the shadow on the dark black plastic underneath. It looks like that now, but I'm going to go take my blending stump and pick some of that up. Okay, so this is the shadow that's being cast on this lemon from that wedge. But this shadow is not as dark as the shadow that's on the plastic. Okay, and that shadow has a shape and I, I need to bring it out some more because from what I'm seeing, it looks like a little droop. So I'm going to come back in. It's a little uh, hill area. All right, so just look at the shapes of your shadows. Your shadows have shapes too. And that's how I learned it. If you look at those dark areas as a shape, it's much easier to map it in there. Much easier. And that's a little dip down in there. It's not perfectly like that from where I'm sitting. Okay, so let's go back to this lemon. Okay, wait. Let me, you see that little edge for my sketch? Let me get those. Now's a good time to get all those edges out that don't go. All right. um lemon wedge okay i said i was going to put a little bit darker there because it's a little bit darker there just a little bit now when i lay it in there it's too dark right now but when i blend it it's going to be okay so just kind of give yourself a feel of where it's a little bit darker where it's a little bit darker where it's a little bit darker little teeny weeny dark spot where that seed is all right let's go back in with my blending stump Blending stumps like charcoal. I'm just going to let you know. They'll probably work with a soft, soft B, really soft B, but blending stumps really, really love charcoal. They work very well together. And I'm going to leave some little indentations to imply where those wedges are or where those little, you know, um, kind of like bicycle spokes. So sometimes you just imply it. You're not even 
drawing it hard on there. You're just making a, it's like an illusion almost. And your eye is going to put it together because your eye knows that this is a lemon wedge and it's going to put it together for you. Your brain is going to put it together. So whatever your hand doesn't do, your eye and your brain is going to do the rest. So you just give them enough information and they'll put the rest of it together. Their brain will do that. That's what our brains do. It tries to make sense of what we see. So you're just kind of helping it out a little bit. All right. Now, what I don't like, now this still looks sketchy right here. So I need to smooth that on out. Because I need to see where the edge of that shadow stops. This is where you get start getting your definition in. And then where this rind, I mean, sorry, lemon wedge starts. I need to get a cleaner blending stump now because I need a lighter, I need something light. Let me get one that is not as dark on the tip. This one is just kind of not even, doesn't have a lot of pigment there. I need something that's just going to blend what's already there and not add any extra because I want that line, I don't like, it looks like a line. You don't want that sketch look to be in there. If, unless you want it to have a sketch look. And if you want your drawing to have a sketch look, the whole thing is gonna have a sketch look. But mine doesn't have a sketch look overall, so you want, whatever that look is overall, you want that, it, you want it to be that. So it shouldn't be, there should be no gray area. It's either edge or no edge. It's either shadow or no shadow. So take that blending stump in there and define that line with your with your blending, with your value. Ah, now that's starting to feel better to me. It doesn't look grainy. That's why these things have tips. You can draw with these things. All right, now that, fe that feels better to me. Now what I need to do, I took up some of my dark shadow there i need to go back in there and put that in you know i've spent what 10 minutes in this little spot here but that's what it takes sometimes those little corners make a big difference that's like the whole personality of the piece or you know of that of that space of that area all right so let's go back with my blending company to get where that seed was and that's a little bit too dark but i said i was gonna blend that out some And if you imply next to, if you imply a dark space next to a light space, that's really going to love you. You know, you know what else you can do? You can take that tip of that uh, blending stump and pick up some of that charcoal if it's soft. If it's soft, it really, really works. I need to get this little, oh, that's just lovely. I love that. Little details, y'all. Little details. Look at there. All right, let's get up underneath that lemon wedge okay that's plastic so we can oh, see that moved my whole shadow then well i'm just gonna bring that down let's hold this still when i move that wedge it moves my shadow but that's okay i'll just move it like this just bring that down make it go where you want it to go okay and then i got all oh, this plastic is just don't be like me. Use some fabric because this plastic has so many innuendos, so many nuances of dark and light. Talking about Kiara Scoodle. You got your contrast of light and dark. All right, I need to make that not grainy. I don't want to lose the edge of my lemon, so I need to make this darker. Because now, right now, the the plastic and the rind, I'm sorry, the plastic and the peel are the same value, and that's not right. The plastic is darker. So, come on back. All right, I need soft because this medium is not working. Um, let me just get another piece of soft, a small piece. And you'll be able to tell when your consistency uh, and your texture of your charcoal is not working. Let me get... A bigger piece of small soft. Is this soft? That is soft. Good. All right, so I'm going to go back in. Mm, I'm going to do it this side because I got to, I'm going to use my left hand here. Gently, gently. I got to come back in with just a little bit of darkness. 
So I just added that so I can blend that so I can make this darker than my rind. I'm, I keep saying rind, my peel. Same here. I'm doing that negative space thing again. I'm not drawing the line of the lemon. I'm drawing the darkness outside the lemon. Same thing back here. Same thing here. Okay. And then just blend, 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 blend. It's hard from this angle. Oh, I'm not going to mess it up. Okay. I don't think I can blend. But right, all I'm doing is just blending in that little area. I'm trying to do it where you can't see it, but I don't want to mess it up with my left hand. Blend, 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 and then I'll come back. Blend, blend, blend. This is a horrible angle, but... Alright, so... I'm just going to... back in like that and then you don't want those choppy you don't want your, you don't want choppy strokes all right now uh, I'm gonna give some attention to that back lemon I know now and also too I have not mapped out my darks and lights perfectly for where my plastic is those are details that you can come back in with later um, but I am going to go ahead and do this one. Because you don't want it floating off into space. All right. And then just some little squigglies here because I'm just going to go ahead and map out where it's darkest over there. Like, remember now, I'm doing a different angle than what I'm not doing this angle. I'm doing side. So I, what you're seeing and what I'm seeing may be two, two different things. And then it's dark over there. All right. So, so I'll go back in and fix all that soon. Um, I want this to stay dark because that's my... You don't want to pick up too much. Wherever it's dark, don't pick up too much of it. Just make it blend and leave it alone. And if you blend, if you pick up too much, go back in with more. Don't be afraid to make it dark. Because if it's dark, you need to make it dark. If it's dark here, make it dark here. Don't say, well, this is too dark for my picture. No, it's not. See, because you don't want you don't want ambiguous spaces. This is ambiguous. This you can't tell where the plastic start stops and the lemon starts. You can't tell where the lemon stops and the plastic starts. You can't tell. You need to be able to tell. So don't be shy with that dark. Like, show it. Um, I got to come back because it's not, I need that edge there without drawing the contour line. I'm not drawing the contour line of the lemon. I'm drawing the darkness outside the lemon. There we go. All right, now. Let's do, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got to erase some of my rind here. I said I was going to come back and do that. And you don't want it too white because that rind is not white, 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 white. It's not. You, you don't want it too white. You want it, you got to get the shape of it. So go in there and erase out what needs to erase out and then come back in and blend some more. It should not be white, 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 white. That rind should not be whiter than this paint. That's not, that's too white. That's not right. Because technically this rind is like a very, very light yellow. Um, so I'm going to come in here with my eraser and get the shape right of that space. And then I'm going to come back in with my blending stump a little bit more. And then if you just got to do like a sweep just to make it not as white, just do that. And not right here. You can't see that, but it's like, it's not totally across like that. It's like that. Like blended a little bit more. All right. Now let's go back to this, these two lemons in the back. Oh, wait. Okay. That's the lemon in the back. All right. Let's go back to these two lemons in the back. Speaking of which, hmm. all right, this lemon in the back, this is spade. This is a, a shadow and this is the lemon in the back, but I got to show the difference between where the shadow of the lemon in the back stops 
and the blackness of the plastic. There's a little bit more detail than what I'm showing here, and I made it too small. This lemon is like bigger than that. So I'm going to erase out. That's my lemon. All right. Um, there's a little bit of whiteness for the plastic in there. Uh, it's shiny plastic, so it's like really white at a certain spot. Now, I need to blend and apply. All right, this is a little bit too dark, so I'm going to pick up some of that darkness. Um, I need what, what I need? I need a chamois, a little corner of a halfway clean chamois. Um, swipe that in just a little bit. Some of that is a little bit, there we go, a little bit too dark. Now, I took out too much, so I'm going to have to put some back. The edge of that, I need a, this, here's where your needed eraser would go well, because you need, a, I need a little point. Uh, I can't really see that. All right, there's two little lines for women here. All right, that's better. Okay. Um, now, I need to take a little bit more out. Okay, okay. And then I need to draw a little bit. I'm talking this out because y'all are um, just talking about what I see. All right, now I need to show the difference. There's, mm. all right, I gotta close one eye because I can't see it all. There's a little, I need to show that this is plastic and this is lemon. So there's a little line there. And it gets a little confusing in there. So areas that are confusing don't need to be confusing. Um, so that's what I need to do now. I need to clarify my areas of lemon versus, air, oh, I went too deep. Areas of lemon versus areas of plastic. That's lemon. This is plastic. That's lemon. This is okay. Now I messed up on this lemon, so I need to get a chamois. Mm, mm, I need to get a dirtier chamois. All right. Uh, now this is where I need to blend, but I need to take it off after I blend. Because if I blend, it's going to be too dark, but I got to get rid of that edge. Now I got to take some of it off with the eraser. Because it's not quite that dark. I'm, I'm going into the other lemon now. Because I messed up. I didn't mess it up, but I'm trying to get that defined space <clears throat> Excuse me, from where that background st uh, stops and where that lemon starts. And it can be confusing, so you got to keep up, like you got to keep up with where you are in the picture and on the still life. So I'm going to come back in now with, um, I'm going to come back in now with the background uh, because all this is plastic, all this is plastic. And if, if I lose it, I can go back in with my eraser and pick up where it needs to pick up. Okay. So uh, there's a line of white right above that shadow of dark. All right. Okay, I'm going to work on that a little bit more. Now let's get, oh, i got to blend that back of that lemon, this part, a little bit more because I took out, I didn't take out too much, but I need to blend it. That's why these little tip, oh crap, I just went into the, I just went into that lemon, and I'm not supposed to. Steady hand, y'all. So, I need to take some of that darkness and spread it out just a little bit. I had to pick some up, and now I'm spreading it out. That's a little bit too dark, and it goes right there. All right. 
Let's work on this lemon in the back. That's a little bit easier because it's not cut. Now, I don't know what happened. Did I move or did I move? Because there was a, okay, I see that little shadow there. All right, it's not as high up, but uh, I'm going to blend that. And let me get my roundness. I went in a little bit too far there. Okay. Now. All right, let me get. Now, lemons, the texture of a lemon is weird because they have these little pock marks. They have all these little divots. Um, um, dimples, I guess is what you call them. So the, the texture, like you can get, um, after a while, you can start stippling to get those, but I would do that like close to last. I wouldn't do that right now. Right now, I just worry about shading because you want to put the detail in last. Um, it's really not this dark, but I'm going to come back in and erase some. And my, I don't have my corner right there. All right, um, you know, they're not perfectly round like basketballs, but you get the point. All right, add your dark areas. Try to stay in the same spot. All right, my, sh my this shadow doesn't come that far up, but I'm gonna erase some of that. Mm. All right, I'm just gonna kind of Okay, I gotta erase. Y'all still with me? Alright. Mm. Alright, my proportion is wrong on this lemon in the back. So, if that, no, this was right. Yeah, that was right. This line is wrong. All right. So, So many eraser crumbs on there. Um, all right, let me. This is all lit, so like, there's no, there's not a whole lot of shadow here. I'm gonna go around this lemon and then erase what I need to erase, so that I, so that I can apply that line. Uh, but uh, but this lemon is actually darker because I don't know why, but the light is falling on this one, so that it's like this. Um. I really didn't give this edge a lot of attention up here. Okay, so this back one has a little bit of shade there, but then all the rest of it, I'm going to come back in and um, take out the areas that are not supposed to be there on this one. All right, so I'm going to blend that one there, get rid of that. And then now what I'm gonna do is just, okay, I'll tell you what, this is darker, so. Hmm, that's kinda hard. This one is darker, this one is darker around here. You can see this edge. I'm drawing with my blending stuff. I'm not even drawing with charcoal because I don't want it that dark. This is defined. All right, so if this is my dark edge, I need to take this. Now, go back with my eraser. What's light? Mm -hmm. This is light. This is light. It's light all the way to the edge of this one. Okay, I like that. Um, it's light in here. How far does that go down? It goes down, it's not 
it goes down to there, but it's not like white, 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 but it's dark, it's lighter than that. So, all right, that line is bothering me, but I'll get it. All right. Mm. More erase. It's, there's a. I don't want that. Okay. There's a line in my and there's a line in my shading. It's not supposed to be there, so I need to find that a little bit more. All right, and then erase some more. Nope, nope, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to erase the edge. Erase this edge. All right, I like that. What I don't like is... I need darkness of my... My plastic. And I'm going to blend. And I just messed up that one. So what I need to do is get a lighter blending stump. And then my eraser. Okay. All right. Now, I think I'm going to... Oh, I see something. I see a line that needs to erase here. I didn't finish that. I just kind of... I don't know what I was doing right there. I think I was doing the background and then focus on the lemon. Get rid of my sketch line. And I need to blend some more. Blend, 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 blend. What am I blending? Uh, just a little bit of blending stump. A little bit of pigment there. Just bring that on down. Now there's an interesting point. Okay, so there's lightness here. And then the darkness is in that wedge. So this goes away. Now, beautiful. So in those ambiguous areas, the light and dark may interchange. So that is part of this lemon now and not the back lemon. Mm. And I need a little edge. I need a little piece of charcoal. I need a little edge there. All right, lemon at the top. Am I avoiding it? No, I'm not. Uh, same thing, rind, peel, rind, and lemon. So, this part is peel. It's easier than it looks. Out of all of the lemon part, that's probably the darkest. That's the yellow part. All right, so it, this is more of a perfect circle than you think. Um, so I need to come back in here and be definitive with my circle. All right. So if that's my circle, let's get rid of the circle that doesn't go. Oh, that's kind of hard. Yeah, it doesn't want to go away. 
All right, just an idea. Okay, now those lines that I drew for the segments, those are actually white. So they're not black. So I'm gonna have to draw the area in between the white segments, the white lines. So let's make that dark. Let's make the dark dark. Let's use that for the darks. And then make spaces in between. Just to get an idea of what's what. Remember, you can use your eraser for the rind. If you make if something needs to be lighter, don't worry about it. Go back in and erase. Remember, draw with your eraser. Like the spokes of a bicycle. Get rid of those lines. Get rid of those hard black lines. Or you can just, I wouldn't erase them because they need to be guidelines until you're through with them. And then you can erase what you don't need. Remember, you have your eraser. Don't fret. Now, I'm not, I'm not looking at the values right now. I'm just kind of getting it in there first, and then I'll go back and figure out which is darker and which is lighter, etc. And then I want to go up to the edge. I'm going to kind of go ahead and start doing that now. Go ahead and kind of start doing that now. That, that wrong line for my other circle, that could be the edge of my rhyme. See, accidents work. Make your accidents work for you. And I didn't even mean to do that. That's just how it worked. And there's dark in between. Use that dark for your edges. Use that, I mean, for your fruit. Use that dark 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 for your fruit. All right, now. Now you go back in and clean up. Make your dark lines disappear. Make it part of the fruit of the lemon. Let's make that... Uh, Actually, I don't even need that line. Let me blend it out and then erase it. If I blend it out and then erase it, it'll be easier to erase. All right. Okay, now, um, let's do... Hmm, let's do a distinct rind. And it's not a perfect circle, but I'm going to make one and then go back in with my little fluted edges or scalloped edges, I should say. It's a skinny, skinny line, but I can go back in. My The tip of my blending stump is finer than this. So I'm going around the edge here. I just totally drew with my eraser. Totally. Well, you erase the problem, not my friend. All right. Now, what I was saying was it's not perfectly circular and it's not that thick in certain areas. So I can go back in. Which one was I using? Go back in. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm drawing with my blending stump. I'm drawing with my blending stump. I'm not drawing with the thing because I don't need dark, dark, dark. I'm using lighter values. All right, let's uh, let's go in with that seed. Get some shading on the side there. Well, it's too dark, but I'll take some out. Use my tip, well, the side of my tip, not the total tip. Shade out where that seed goes. And a little dark side is a little bit too dark, so how can I get that off? Take a little corner of my chamois. 
fold it into a little corner. Doop, doop, just dab at it. All right, cool. Now, I'm still seeing some lines from my hard sketch lines. Make that go away. Make that go away. It looks grainy. It looks sketchy. I don't want it to look grainy. I want it to look soft and blended like everything else. Those lines should be implied, natural, not uh, drawn or look like they're drawn. Now what I need to do is that center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little dark in there. I'm trying not to do this so y'all can't see. But All right. Give me just enough pigment so I can blend it, but not too much that it's too dark because I'm getting real small now. It's going to be hard to get that chamois in those little corners if you put too much pigment. And if it's too much, you can't just leave it there. You got to you gotta take it out. Now, I need more definition here. I need more definition around that little hole there. And I'm going to take, what I'm going to do is take, like I showed you, I'm going to take my Blending something and pick up some of that, get it, make sure it's soft. Soft charcoal, just get some, get some on the tip, just like that, and draw with it. Get my definition in there. All right, that's too dark, but don't worry about it. Get my definition. Get my definition. Get my definition. Get my definition. Pick up some more. I'm liking this. I didn't know this was going to be like this today. See? Uh, get my, oh, too dark. Get my definition. Get my definition. I need dark on the other side of that. Lemon seed. Get my definition. Now, come back in with my eraser. Find an edge. I need an edge because I need a skinny, skinny line. I need a definition line there. Definition line there. Uh, definition line there. Definition line there. Mm -hmm. There. 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 Definition line there, there, there. All right, I don't want to mess with that too much. It's not too bad. All right, so I do know that this is rounded out. It's got that sketchy look. It's grainy. How do I do this? Yes, I'm going outside the lines, but I need to get rid of that line. So I'm going to go ahead and blend it and then come back in with my what? My eraser. All right, where, let's see if I can't get that thing to stand so I can see how big that edge is. It's a good thing that I was close to being through with this. All right, so take my eraser and take out what's not supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. Okay, bad angle. Really bad angle. See, I just drew with my eraser. Totally. Draw with your... Oops, I took out too much. Draw with your eraser. I took out too much. I gotta put that back. Okay. Gentle, gentle, gentle. Eraser crumbs. Gotta go. Gentle, gentle. All right, we're gonna take out too much right here. All right, I have no idea what this looks like because I'm drawing like sideways. All right, so I had I had my table here, and I need to make keep that dark. Uh, I had some table in between there, so let me just get my dark. I need an edge. Use the edge and make a line. Use it sideways. I got a table in between there. 
and I know I'm, I messed it up because I messed it up, but I guess I'm going to have to add that to be proportionally correct since I messed up my background. I don't know if that's going to look right because it was right and now it's not right. So uh, either I'm going to erase it or make it part of the background or what. I'll see when I look back from it. All right, we'll make it work. So if you mess up your station here or your setup, you got to you got to make it proportionally correct here. Cuz whoever looks at this, they're not going to be sitting to see what you were seeing. They're going to see this. So this needs to be proportionally correct. So this is your guide. Just do the best you can. I just went too high. Oh my god. All right, what do I do? Get the eraser. That's why we have erasers. All right, now, I'm going to just kind of map it. Okay, let's get rid of my sketch marks here. You don't want sketchy. You don't want lines to be sketchy. That's sketchy. I need to go back in. So this whole lemon right here was, this is light source. So all that, those lines need to go. Gentle, 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 gentle. Matter of fact, this whole line needs to go, but it's hard to erase charcoal. All right, let's get rid of that. Now, how do I fix that? I can either do shade here, but it's not, it's light there. So I can either do a light like that. Let's, let me get my chamois. Hold on. Let me get a cleaner chamois. All right, and don't start rushing because it's at the end and that's what I've started doing and now it's wrong. I'm getting streaks that don't need to be there. Or you can go around it with some background. Okay, let me finish out this table at the bottom and we'll be on our way. I can leave it like that or no. So, so you got your darts coming off of that. And this doesn't have to be perfect. You're just implying because you don't want to rush and and people can tell when you rush with your drawing. If you took time up there and you start just throwing something together down there, they can tell. I'm just that's just the bottom line. So the plastic goes, it cascades over the book up underneath them. I've got it like on a book. You just you need to map out your dark areas, and there's a whole bunch of dark areas. And there's an implied line here showing where that is. I'm doing the same thing with my darks that I did earlier. You can't really rush it. There's no way of rushing it. You just can't. You just have to kind of do it. You can apply it because your focus is the lemons and not the not the uh, surface. But you got to apply the surface because if you don't, it's gonna just be a mess and it's gonna be floating. You're like, well, what are the lemons sitting on? So I'm just gonna do just enough to where I can get by with the time that I have here. Oh, there's so many wrinkles in this plastic. Next time, I will do fabric. All right, let's see if we can work with that. All right, so real quick. Plastic, you just do light area. I'm sorry, dark areas right next to light areas. And that's going to make your illusion. 
dark areas right next to light areas with hard lines. And that's going to make your illusion. Just do the shapes of the darker areas. And I'm just doing a few. I'm not doing every little crinkle in this fabric because that's I don't have the time for my sitting, my one sitting here today. And my focus is going to be on the lemons. So we are implying a surface. We are implying a surface. This is the part where it's just implied. We are implying a surface for the sake of time. I don't even know what this looks like. Oh, it's not too bad. It's a it's a trick. It's an illusion. You're tricking the eye to believe that there's fabric or plastic coming off this table. How do you do that? With edges. Implied lines for our contrast with our darks and lights for our crinkles. And implied edges for the edges of where the plastic is falling off the book. Mm -hmm. Some of those go across the top. Some of the top goes across the bottom. And you got to keep up with which ridge you're on because you're forgetting they all start running together. You got to draw what you see. So like if I'm on this ridge and then there's this ridge and then there's this ridge, you got to get each little individual ridge. And you got to keep up with the one that you're on. Like I just lost where I was. I'm on this one, I think. I think when I moved it, it changed the, it changed the shape of the, just have your edges, don't blend them all the way, and keep those edges, that, that makes the crinkles happen. line try not to make your strokes shown I mean you're a little choppy it shouldn't look choppy it should look blended so don't rush it and if you're tired just take a break and come back you just have to leave your setup but I'm doing just enough So that I get that edge there. I'm doing just enough. I need to come back with my eraser here. Edge. It's hard to do because I think it's at the bottom. And I got a little reflection inside there. It's hard to do because the thing is at the bottom and it's cutting off my thing. Alright, I think I'm going to just kind of stop there. I need to blend. Blend, 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 blend. All right, I don't know what that looks like, but we get the point. So your values here should not be the same as your values here. Those lemons need to stand out. So if I need to come back in a little bit later and make any of those areas darker, so that I can stand, you can see where the lemons start and where the plastic stops or where the plastic starts and where the lemons stop, do that. But I think I'll stop there. Um, you can probably, you know what, let me, let me, before I do that, let me take a dirty chamois just so it won't be so white back here and just kind of. What you can use your dirty chamois for. Try not to get 
the wrinkles in there. So it won't be so white, 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 white. Dirty shammy. Because if you use a different hand, you're going to get a different stroke direction. You got to come back over there and blend it so that it makes sense, then do that. I don't know what this looks like. Dirty chamois. Dirty chamois. All right, you don't want a halo around the thing, so just kind of, I don't know. Just kind of just, I don't know, just map that in there. And then whatever doesn't need to go, go back in with the eraser. Dirty right here. Let's make a real smudgy part right there. Let's make some areas darker than others. Let me get a dirtier chamois. This is just for the sake of time and filling up the space so it doesn't look so white. And get my eraser and I'm going to do... away from your drawing after you finish this is not finished but this is finished for this demonstration time thank you so much for your attention I'm so sorry that my lemons moved but what I can see from my reflection right here is I probably need to go back in a little bit more because that that area there is not definitive one lemon gets lost in another and there's like some white space that doesn't make sense um, and if I remember correctly you can just go back in and do your finishing touches. Uh, I could just make that a little darker, but you can go back in where you need to add some definition and do that. But I just want to thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Thank you.